I buy some crazy things, and this is one of them, and it's up there. Can you help me, Mark, please? He didn't think I should buy this. He thought I was a little crazy. And, you know, maybe I am sometimes. Do you see how big this is? Let me turn the camera the other way. <laughs> anyway, Mark is holding this. Let's get it packed and get it shipped. We can do this, can't we? Mm. <laughs> checking out my boxes and I think maybe we can get by with two of these box number 1097 at least we're going to try this is a vintage maple wood desk drawer organizer and yes it has stamps and markings can't really see it through the plastic wrap too much but it does and it sold for full asking price of $69.95 plus shipping I bought it at the ReStore for $8 now, come on, Mark. Wouldn't you say this is a woohoo? Woohoo! We still have to pack it, though. For my eBay listing, I estimated dimensions of 26 by 12 by 3 and weight between 6 to 7 pounds. Calculated shipping. Let's get it packed. So I'm checking these two boxes that I have, checking the end flaps and how much they'll overlap. And these are going to work great. I'm going to get the, I'm going to get the organizer bubble wrapped first and then see how well it fits. Okay, before I bubble wrap it, we're just checking for clearance. I just did a test with the large half inch bubble wrap and I can't put it both directions. So I'm going to use some small bubble wrap to protect the sides, which I'd like to use large, but I can't, and then fold this over. So let's get that done. I'm going to be using masking tape and I have this in my heavy duty dispenser. And you can find a link for that in the description below the video. Let's get the small bubble wrap first and it's not going to reach completely but because I have stretch wrap on here it's okay. Put another one here and I'm going to go ahead and fold in the ends kind of like I would a present. Let me get some tape. I think that's pretty good. Let's do this end. I wish I could put something thicker here and here, but I can't. So I have to go with what I can do. And because I have limited space, I don't want this to overlap. So I'm going to cut this back a little bit. I just want it to butt, not overlap it'll be too thick. We already did a test fit for that. So I can move this down a little bit. That's pretty good. Get some tape. And I think I'm going to get a longer piece and tape this from the top to the bottom. Turn it and do the same thing here. I could tape these down too actually because that would keep make it easier to slip into the box. Guess I didn't need my tape that long. <laughs> Flipped over on me. Let's turn it. Let's do this side. And from too long to too short. Make it work. Okay, and I put my thank you note on the inside. It's in there. And now let's take these two boxes. We have to be careful of the length because we don't want to get too long because if we do, there's an upcharge. I think it was 30 inches. If you get longer than 30 inches, you pay a lot more. So let's see how much room we have to work with. Let me get my tape measure. I just happen to have a soft tape down here. So I'm checking this and it's right about 27 and a half inches. That means I really can't put air pillows on both ends. So I don't think I'm going to put anything else on the ends. I think I'm going to go with what I have here. Let's try the boxes. I'm doing a test fit to see if this is going to shimmy it all side by side. It is not. It's barely going to make it. But let's keep pushing this in. And of course, I need to close this flap. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I know my ending point. I love this tape. <laughs> that was sarcasm. <laughs> it doesn't always peel off right. All right. I will add extra tape, packing tape to this. But let's keep pushing this in and see where it's going to stop. Okay, pretty certain that's as far as I can go. Now you know 
it can be challenging to slip a box over top another box. We'll see how that goes. Okay, so I'm attempting to pull this over top, or on the other end, I should say, and I have to watch, I have flaps coming up against flaps, you see here? So this is where it gets challenging. I need one set of flaps to go in to the other set, and I'm deciding, I guess, that this is going on the inside. So I have to slow down a little bit. I'm gonna have to fuss with it a little bit, probably. Get it started. Let me flip it over, see what's happening on the other side. See what's happening, it's catching here. This is where I could probably cut the angle on these. So let me pull this back out and cut these flaps. You can see it's starting to tear here a little bit. Well, I'm going to go ahead anyway and cut this on the diagonal and reduce some of that thickness. Now I have this flap too, a little more awkward, but let me see what I can do here. You can see I'm cutting little triangles out. Now let's get this one. Mark's trying to help me here with the camera. I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing on this side. I'm trying to get into that corner. And it doesn't matter how big or small the triangle is, just so you're going to eliminate that pressure. Okay, let's go to this front one. I could have done this before I started putting everything together. It is something we've done before, but I kind of forgot about it until I was saying it wasn't going very well. So this is what I cut away. I'll just throw that away and we'll try again. Okay, let's see. <laughs> you know, sometimes, let me do this. Let me fold the flaps up on this end. Not going to tape it, just so I have a flat end to push with. And I can already feel that something's catching. Let me turn this over again. I'm not sure which one it is. They keep catching one side to the other. I keep having, okay, now we're making progress. You just have to play with it. This one. I'm getting there, I really am. Just keep checking it. You know, I can see it's tearing a little bit, but I'll be taping all of that. I'm trying to get this down as tight as it can be. I think I'm there. If we open this end flap, yeah, I'm there. All right, I'm going to go ahead and peel this tape. Again, I'll add more. This does this sometimes. It doesn't make a straight line. Okay, that's why you have to add extra tape. Did you see how easy that was for me to pull open? We're checking the measurement again, and Mark decided to get the manly tape instead of my sewing tape. What are we at? 27. 27, looks good. Okay, we need to tape everything down. Just going to use some of my um, my Scotch heavy duty shipping tape, and you'll find a link for this in the description below the video. Okay, I want to make sure these do not separate, so I'll do this first. And then because I have the flap open here, I'll add some more tape. So let me get that done. I'll be right back. To make sure the two boxes are really connected well. Yes, I went around with the tape, but I'm going to add some more here. Connect the two. Couple here. Sometimes I don't get it real flat, but it's okay. We've got plenty of room to add the label. And I told you I always add extra tape to the end. I don't trust this. You can already see, this is probably the end that I started pulling open. You can see it's gapping here. Sometimes I just tear the tape off, put it like this, push it in and press it down. And I'm gonna add some to the corners. Pressing it down. Let's spin this around. Even this is slightly loose here. We need to tape everything down. We're rechecking the measurements here We're at 27 in length. I have to round up to 12 wide, and we'll show you how we do the height. Because the center is higher than the ends, Mark added a straight ruler, and what would you say the height is? It's three and a half. Three and a half, so we have to round it up to four. We're out on Mark's workbench. We have an O-house scale. 
I think it weighs up to what, 75 pounds? At least, maybe, okay. maybe more. So we're gonna weigh this. All right, we have it on the scale. It comes in at 6.2 pounds. So you know how USPS works. It's really seven pounds. And we'll get it labeled and in the mail. It's going to Maryland and it's 27 by 12 by four, 6.2 pounds. If you've never been on a pirate ship, it's very easy to use. The actual measurements came out to be 27 by 12 by four and the actual weight 6.2 pounds, but of course it does get rounded up per USPS. Mark was running the label and noticed that it says non-standard fee for being over 22 inches. I thought it was 30. We are being charged $4, so that comes to $13.90. We're okay because we collected $14.82 and it came to $13.90. However, I'm going to back up here. We are on pirate ship. I'm going to go back to previous step because I did want to add insurance. And there's a little button here that says extra services. And I'm going to see how much it costs to add some insurance because I know that USPS insurance isn't doing anything to pay out unless they don't deliver. So I'm going to insure the $69.95 item. I found out that you want to insure it for over $100. So I'm going to insure it, I know this sounds crazy. I'm going to insure it for 101, hit enter, and I'll go to the next page. The reason you insure it for more is that there's $100 of insurance included, so you have to go over that. You see the $100 for $101. They charged me $1.60. That's all, $1.60. And I know from other resellers that if you have a claim, you will get paid out on this private insurance where you do not get paid out most of the time from priority mail. So bottom line, it's now coming to $15.50 and we collected $14.82 and that's perfectly fine. Always check your ship date because it defaults typically to the day that you're doing the label. So make sure, you know, we're mailing this tomorrow, so always check your ship date. So give Pirate Ship a try. I'm not sponsored, not affiliated, just highly recommend it. Honestly, I think that was so much easier than I even expected. It was a great sale, and we'll get it in the mail. Appreciate a thumbs up.